our semifinals to begin here in Indianapolis. Look at that. Is that a Pokemon scarf? Because if so, I'm in. Looks like a Pokeball, but I'm, I'm not in sure. I'm in for that. I'm not totally sure. Hobbs will start things off with a hollowed fountain. Over to Matt Magnuson, we will go. Max will play a plane, so he'll have a one drop because that's what his deck does. It's a Dauntless Bodyguard. In fifth place, Kyle Peters. Looks like another hollowed fountain in hand. That'll enter the battlefield untapped. Hobbs is going to fall down to 18. We'll go back over to Max as it looks like we're announcing the top eight of our standard classic. It was a very full one. It appears as though Ross Merriam did make the top eight of that among many others. So congratulations to our standard classic top eight competitors. We'll have those deck lists, of course, on StarCityGames.com for you to review once the event is over. As it looks like Warrant is going to put that on top, but... Max is going to sacrifice it. Yeah, no interest in drawing that one. Okay, fair enough. Now here's a copy of Tithe Taker. That'll be hit here by Depose to be tapped. Looks like Hobbs was looking for a land and did not find one, so now we head back over to Max. Now Tithe Taker, a brand new card that we're happy to take a look at here, a card that Tom Ross was a big fan of. The two mana 2-1 two during your turn spells your opponent's cast cost one more to cast and abilities your opponent's activate cost one more to activate unless their mana abilities not a bad card but a better card has arrived here in history of Benalia it'll be a seal away to take care of the tithe taker here for Jonathan Hobbs and now it's going to be a breeding pool that enters the battlefield tap so we head back over to Max he'll draw a card read chapter 2 on the history and he'll make another 2-2 vigilant knight Although it looks like Madison's hand here a little bit land heavy on the leftovers. I think he has Legion's Landing plus a Deputy. And not much past that. There is the Deputy. Take care of the Seal Away. Get the Tithe Taker back. A play I like quite a bit. And now it'll be a Legion's Landing. Trigger. Make a 1 1 life linking vampire. And it should be pretty easy to transform that next turn as we head back over to Jonathan Hobbs because, as you mentioned, Patrick, there's just a real lack of removal. Right. Doesn't kill stuff. Tries to clog up the battlefield, but that's a tough thing to do when you fall behind. Absolutely. Breeding Pool is going to end the battlefield untapped here for Jonathan Hobbs. Looks like he's going to fall down to 12. The follow-up is a Growth Chamber Guardian, and now a blink of an eye is going to take care of a token. That's a hard way to do it. Ooh. That's <laughs> <laughs> Chapter 3 on History of Benalia has now resolved. It's a hard way to do it. Everybody is going to come in. And Seal Away will trans... Excuse me. Legion's Landing will transform. Into a Danto. There's the block. Tithe Taker and the Growth Chamber Guardian will trade. Afterlife will trigger and a 1-1... One, one White and black spirit token should be on the way so long as Max remembers his trigger because that is on him to do so. There we are. Back over to Hobbs we go. To fairy in hand, but not a great time for it. And so now here is an activation of Adonto. Back to Max Magnuson we do go. And this one feels a little bit one-sided even though Max is flooding pretty badly. Yeah, this is not an inspiring start here for Hobbs. No, it is not. In comes the History of Benalia token and the Spirit. So Max is playing around Frilled Mystic quite a bit and... So appro sharp. Appropriately so. Doesn't need to play into it, so just attacked with the 2-2 Knight and the 1-1 Flying Spirit. Glacial Fortress enters the battlefield untapped. Make another Vampire on the end step, and now Magnuson will untap and draw. In the driver's seat as he picked up a copy of Snubhorn Sentry, it looked like. Okay. 
Got to be feeling pretty good about how this one is starting to shape up if you're Max Magnuson. Yeah, you just got. You want to make sure that you don't do anything. Like playing into Hobbs' as open mana, that allows him to blow you out in combat and then untap and get to his turn and maybe land something like Teferi to stabilize the game. As long as you get in a couple chip shots here and there and keep activating Adanto, it's it doesn't feel likely that Hobbs can answer that in the long term. So Madison can afford to be patient here. I think a big thing here for Magnuson is he's trying to play around Angel of Grace as best he can. Yeah. Because that's a four of an Hobbs deck. Players have access to each other's deck list. It would make total sense if he had one, and he does. Angel of Grace, a brand new one. We'll take a look at it, of course. There are some blocks to be had here. You can see here, Madison still gets Hobbs down to one into this. Mm -hmm. So not like the Angel uh, end of the battlefield trigger did a whole lot on that front and wasn't willing to expose the Deputy of Acquittals in combat either, which I like. Yeah, that Deputy has been hanging out for quite some time here. Angel of Grace, 5 mana, 5 4, flash flying, thankfully not vigilance, so otherwise this thing might be too good. When Angel of Grace enters the battlefield until end of turn, damage that reduce your life total to less than 1, reduces it to 1 instead. And if this thing is in your graveyard, you can exile it from your graveyard for, war for 4 white white, and your life total becomes 10. That Snubhorn Sentry joins the fray. And I believe, uh, yeah, the city's blessing is more than engaged. So Snubhorn Sentry is a large monster. Hobbs at one, facing down one, two, one, two, three, four, five, potentially six creatures next turn. It's probably going to take another angel. Yeah, I mean, uh, Madison, there's no pressure to really do anything. You can, you can kind of send it in the same, you know, halfway attack where if Hobbs has another angel, then okay, you get to eat some stuff up in combat. But I still have a board that's wide enough that next turn I can go for it again. And Hobbs only has so many angels in the deck. Mm-hmm. So I think attacking with four creatures is about right. Well, I think three is a little shy. Yeah, so you, you can beat, you know, this beats one spell inside of combat. Yep. So four is the attack. Because you don't want to commit the premium stuff, you know? Your larger creatures and certainly the Deputy of Acquittals. If Hobbs has something to do, oh, man. March of Multitudes is, is, is pretty darn good. That's a one of. Yeah, you don't want to commit that. Right. right. That you don't want to unlock the seal away. But this is really bad news for Madison. And these these sort of oddball tricks inside of combat are really hard to play. Play around everything here. Because you go up to five here if you trade off everything. Mm-hmm. I've got some interest in... Well, well okay. You yeah, can't, yeah, you can't yeah, trade yeah, you off. can double up on whatever. Yeah, you can double up on one. You can't kill the spirit token because that's flying, but you can double up on one. And now you're at a spot where maybe Hobbs can untap and land to ferry... And, and then things change. And then you're not facing lethal the next turn. Yeah. So going to gain five, take one. Going to gain four, pardon me, go up to five, take one, fall down to four. And this looks pretty nice. And if you take a look at Magnuson's hand, he's just a lands. ton of lands. So that one of March... Of the multitudes ends up looking pretty good. So now we go back over to Hobbs, who, as you mentioned, does have Teferi in hand. Oh, I, I think we've got we've shifted to the point where now Madison is just in trouble. There is Teferi. I mean, he doesn't have enough of a battlefield here to hang around. Going to tuck away the Deputy of Detention, which means Sealway comes back. Sealway is going to come in take care of the flyer for good and absolutely we can do some attacking on the ground I think or excuse me in the air with the angel yeah and so I think there's a little bit of difficulty on where exactly the deputy should be it should be two it should be the third card drawn right it goes one two and then the deputy and I think Max may have put it back in the wrong order what a comeback here for Hobbs well he hasn't come all the way back but he's definitely playing some magic right now that is for sure. And it's because of all of these I, wacky one ofs. I feel like the door's sh I mean, I feel like the door's shut here. Well what's what's Madison's set of draws to come back from this? I mean he's making a creature every single turn. It's not like the angel has lifelink or anything. I mean Teferi's obviously powerful. 
But he, it's not like he. It's not like his draw steps. Re, it's not like he is required to draw a creature every turn because he's at least making one. Now, I mean, drawing more lands is obviously not ideal, and he would like to draw a spell so he's making two creatures a turn. But uh, this absolutely does get hard. I think if Hobbs finds a, another counter spell like a Frilled Mystic, then I think it's over. Yep. Because if you can get the deputy attention on the way back and cover against whatever he's going to try to exile, then. Mm -hmm. I mean, as an example, right now, I don't think there's a good attack to be had. Snubhorn Sentry is thinking about coming in. That's an easy block. So those two creatures will trade. There's a land. Pass the turn back. Let's go back over to Hobbs. Hobbs will draw. Didn't get a great look at it, but he'll plus. Draw another card. Actually, that card, okay. Well, now I'm with you. He drew a Settle of the Wreckage and an Angel of Grace. Sure. So... It's a lot to, you know, whatever. So. <laughs> it's a weird flash deck. Well, I, you know, the, all right, so you want to, you know, Alpha Strike, that's plan is rough, and mm -hmm. if you want to drew these, like, half-measure attacks to sort of hedge, mm -hmm. that didn't work either. Again, a little bit of life there. Follow up. History of Benalia, sure. Outclassed now. Pass the turn back. Curious to see how aggressive Hobbs wants to get with the Angels, but I guess when you have Settle the Wreckage in hand, you can get pretty aggressive. Spell appears a pretty bad draw in this spot. Draw a card, Glacial Fortress. I mean, I s well. I guess you still have to answer. The deputy is coming down next turn, right? Mm -hmm. There's an attack for ten. I think we're making this play working on the assumption that here's how this here's how these next turns go, right? He makes a token attack. I settle you. Mm -hmm. You deputy my angels. I to fairy tuck tuck your deputy. Get my angels back. Yep. Probably win the game the next turn. That's probably how this plays out. Going to go after Teferi. Oh, there's Settle the Wreckage. Take care of those two creatures. Max, of course, can search up two basics if he, if he would like. Really tight on mana here, so. <laughs> <laughs> Tough draw here for uh, for Magnuson. Yeah, and as you mentioned, you know you can go ahead and uh, tuck the deputy of detentions away, unlock your angels, and then Magnuson is drawing to basically just another one. Chemistry's insights. Are you taking care? And now back to Max. History of Benalia. We'll trigger. I just don't see it. Uh. Well, you got to attack with both to present lethal. That yeah, forces yeah, yeah, an yeah. angel to block one of the knights. Mm -hmm. Which is what happened. Hobbs falls down to... Should be one. Should be one, right? Activate here. What's this? Four mana. Okay. Locks it on. Okay. I mean, this is still... I don't... Yeah. I mean, 
This should just be untap attack with both, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what Madison can do about this. Uh, I think the answer is nothing, and it is. So, Jonathan Hobbs is going to win game number one here over Max Magnuson. As Bant Midrange up a game here over Azorius Agro. Just couldn't finish it off, could Magnuson. Got close. Some wild one ofs and that, that March of the Multitudes there from Hobbs was so clutch. I think Madison was, was playing that game in such a way that he could have beat any number of Angels in a row, but that one March gave Hobbs the breathing space necessary to get to Ferry Online, and from there it was cruise control. The power of the one of, right? Mm -hmm. That's part of the reason people do play one ofs, and it is an interesting one of there in Mulch, uh, March of the Multitudes, to be sure. A game winner there for Jonathan Hobbs as we turn our attention to the sideboards. We'll start with Max Magnuson, who's got three of Johnny, Adversary of Tyrants, three baffling in, three of that powerful Honor Guard, along with three Negates, two Spell Pierce, and one Island. Patrick, what are we liking? Uh, I think I might be on same 60. I think the more worrisome card in Hobbs' list here is the, the Angel more than any of the spells. And I think the cost to bring in the Negates and Spell Pierce is awfully high. I'm not sure if Ajani is really that much to write home about in this matchup. Not a whole lot to baffling end. Yeah, I think I think I would say same 60. Maybe I would consider the negates and spell pierces. The P. Sully classic. Same say. Same, same 60. 60. For Jonathan Hobbs, it'll be three Night of Autumn, two Crushing Canopy, two Disdainful Stroke, two Negate, a Mass Manipulation, a Deputy of Detention, a Cleansing Nova, a Shall I Voice of Plenty, a Lear Dawnbringer, and a copy of Baffling End of his own. Love the Baffling End, the Lyra, the Shall I, the Cleansing Nova, the Deputy of Detention, and the Mass Manipulation. I think all the one ofs here are really good. Mass Manipulation's a nice fun of. Yeah. One mass manipulation in the sideboard, I think we're going to see a ton of that. You think that'll be a norm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Don't want to draw a whole bunch of them. Not good all the time, but... Yeah, it's pretty hard to cast. They got their moments. Fair enough. Well, that's game number one here, folks, in our first semifinal matchup between Bant Midrange and Azorius Agro. We'll get to game number two here in just a moment. We do want to talk about our StarCityGames.com personality tokens and how you can go about getting them. You can get yours this January and February, sets of five included, with entry into any SCG Open or Classic or any StarCityGames.com order of $20 or more, or collect your set by participating in Star City Games Invitational Qualifiers. We'll start with old Jerry T., who is a soldier token. We got Big Brad Nelson, who wanted to be a weird-looking insect, so he got it. We'll go to Jay Dean, who we love dearly and miss, but doing well in Washington, Wizard of the Coast, I do know. That's 1-1 one, one spirit flying token. We'll go to Emma now, who is the 1-1 one, one changeling. And for Brian Gottlieb, I don't think there's a broken clavicle in this one, is there? I don't know that. No. Ah, he throws it out his shoulder. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> if he throws to that squirrel too yeah. hard, yeah, that's very true. There you go. So those are our StarCityGames.com personality tokens. Of course, again, you can get yours with entry into any Star City Games Open or Classic, any StarCityGames.com order of twenty dollars or more, or head out to an IQ near you. You know what I saw on those? What's that? Set number five of thirty or five of fifteen or mm, something? Yeah, suggests. There's some suggestions. To are, be we gonna get, are we going to get our shine on this year? I, I don't know, but I know a guy who, who might. Yeah. I'm, I know a guy who might. So Personality tokens, huh? Mm -hmm. would, would a token of someone's personality. Yeah. Or an attempt to leverage their personality as some sort of uh, exercise in branding. Branding. Brand. Build your brand. Ooh. The fire might have to Might have to turn that into t 5 out of 29. Yeah. <laughs> We'll have to have that talk. Yeah, we'll later. talk later. Yeah, we'll talk. Yeah, that'll we'll be, turn it on. I'll talk. That'll be a whole different thing. Yeah, is what that'll be. Got it. Got it. Game number two about to be underway here between Bat Midrange and Azorius Agro. Ooh. That's all right. We'll get you a nice human token. Okay. Be fine. That'll be fine. Yeah, you're what? Are you a dragon or a knight on the other one? A dragon. You're a dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Angry. Yeah. Get you a nice Boros token. That's what will be next. It's a good-looking dragon. Boros Soldier. Yeah. Give some beatdowns. Sure. Or is there any tokens in that red deck now? No, uh, right? Uh, no. No goblins, no... Well, it's generally only goblins in a mono red deck, I think. Depends. I mean, if you sideboard treasure map, then you get the... You, you, get, the, you get the treasure token. Right, sure, but sure. not no no creature tokens, okay. no. A little surprised no mono red in the top eight here this week. I figured it'd be a heavy... Really play. surprising. I mean, Caleb, Caleb made... Uh, Came in tenth, I believe, and missed on breakers. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Yeah, none in the top eight. It's very surprising. It's a good deck. I feel pretty strongly about that. Good deck. Maybe maybe a few changes need to be made, but on the whole, good deck, good types. Yeah, I think it's a good deck. So, 
Again, we have our backup match between Anthony DeVardi playing Salt Eye Midrange against Nick Howden playing Esper Control. That's time shifted. We'll get to that after this one. We want to be able to bring you as much magic as we can here. And eventually we're crowning ourselves a champion in Indianapolis. Someone's walking out here with a whole bunch of cast SCG points and invite to our Season 1 Invitational here on the SCG Tour. That's taking place at SCG Con at the Berglund Center in Roanoke, Virginia. Could be Jonathan Hobbs. Could be Max Magnuson. That walks out of here as champion. Had some big names in the top eight this weekend, too, and Wyatt Darby and Brad Carpenter. But both of those players eliminated in the quarterfinals. Both these players lay out their opening seven, and Max will be on the play again with his very aggressive Azorius aggro deck. One of the few players here this weekend playing a base white aggro deck. Curious your thoughts on the blue splash as opposed to red. Well, it's a very different... I mean, once you're talking about playing Deputy of Detention, then you're already at a pretty like wild deviation from what we saw from the Pro Tour in the Boros lists. Because you have no... The Boros list from the Pro Tour had no main deck red cards. And the times that you were bringing in your Bane Fires or uh, Experimental Frenzies or whatever the red cards were, were typically for control matchups where they had Settle the Wreckage and you could bring in a Mountain. So the opportunity cost is a lot lower. What Madison do is doing is quite a bit different. First of all, you have a main deck blue card. That's already changing the volatility of your draws quite a bit. Second, you're still sort of depending on naturally drawing a blue source um, because it's not like negate and spell pierce are just for people with settle the wreckage. So I think Madison is, is, is incurring a much higher risk of the draw not working out compared to the decks we saw at the Pro Tour in exchange for just having some really powerful blue cards available. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's totally analogous to what we saw at the PT because uh, Luis's deck, for example, that, that deck was free rolling the red. More because or you, less, yeah. You didn't have any main deck red cards, and then you were playing against Settle the Wreckage quite frequently when you were bringing in the red cards. Magnuson is, is not, uh, not getting a helping hand in that regard. He just kind of has to naturally draw the blue mana, and we've already seen in some of the uh, in some of the game ones at least he has drawn deputy of detention without a blue source of mana. That's yes. a feature of the deck. That is that is a real risk. There's the honor guard on the hunted witness to get this game started. We'll see the honor guard and deputy of detention is not a combo. Uh, what see. makes you say that? I'll take a look at the honor guard. Am I right? Enters the play abilities don't work. Yeah, you're right. And then the deputy to attention is enter the playability. Right. So that would not be a combo. You got it. You got it. I get it right, right? Okay. Yeah. Just want to make sure I didn't screw up. And the growth chamber guardian, not enter the battlefield trigger. That's correct. You pay the adept. Yeah. Madden and Sun starting the game off with some mopey beats here. <laughs> the mopey bees. <laughs> here it is. <laughs> Here's a 1-1. One, one. Here's a 1-3. Here's a 2-2. Two, two. That's it. Put the brakes on. Yeah. I would have attacked with the 1-3, by the way. Yeah, you got to test him there. Yeah, absolutely. Got to test him there. See if, I, Hobbs, uh, is, see if Hobbs is still awake. He's playing with Seal away. It's kind of sloppy. Just to uh, randomly, yeah, it's not good. Randomly tapping your creature is right. a little sloppy. <laughs> but what if he goes to 18? <laughs> but what if? Yeah. It's, let's, uh, let's talk about that for a minute. Oh, got some counter magic in hand now, too, does Max. In Spell Pierce. Let's see what this one's going to be. Uh, the uh, the Dauntless Bodyguard. All right. I don't think that works. I have. A, I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure that works either. Yeah. No. It's not as right. It's under the battlefield. We have to take a look at Dauntless Bodyguard. We can find out. Conclave Tribunal. I'm gonna adapt in response. Here's some beatdowns. Get another Growth Chamber Guardian. But still not bad here for Madison if this is kind of as fast as it gets for uh, Hobbs. Because next turn, Chapter 3 of History of Benali is going to come off. And even if Hobbs, you know, plays the uh, Growth Chamber Guardian, he's going to be hard-pressed to block in such a way that he makes good inroads on the board and keeps his health total high. Well, Dauntless Bodyguard says, as Dauntless Bodyguard enters the battlefield, choose another creature you control. Sacrifice Dauntless Bodyguard. The chosen creature gains indestructible until end of turn. There is a Growth Chamber Guardian. Pass the turn back. History of Banalia is going to go off here in just a moment. 
it's perhaps my favorite, my least favorite part of Magic's rules and templating, is the difference between when and as. It's slightly frustrating. It's. I'm we, gonna go. I'm gonna go with slightly. Weasel language. <laughs> mm. Weasel language has been announced. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, that one says as, which <laughs> means it's totally different. <laughs> Right. How did you not know that? Yeah, that's that's right. <laughs> now, this is my kind of magic right here. Everybody in the club. Let's give some beat downs. Four, eight, nine, I believe ten. Let's beat down a clock. Got no responses. Yep. Yeah, so they're going to trade. There we go. It's been a long day for everybody. Play a land, pass the turn back. Hobbs is... Hobbs is Dobbs. Well... I've been waiting to say that all weekend. Really? I'll wow. be honest. Yeah, my life is horrible. Um, well, if he has the angel, it gets really complicated. How about now when he's got four mana? Yeah, that well, the Temple Garden tapped is not exactly the sign of strength one was hoping for. Mm -hmm, yeah. Get him. Yes, Bell Pierce for Settle the Wreckage. Get him. March, you count on that too. You're done. We're done. Max Magnuson wins game two over Jonathan Hobbs, who was Dobbs. Azorius Agro. Bant mid range, getting ready for game number three. Hobbs unable to gum up the works to really defend himself and even a modest draw from Madness in there. Uh, more than enough to get it done. So I think this is a pretty tough spot here for Hobbs. I, I'm not a big fan of his matchup. No, me neither. I think uh, game one was cool though. That was a cool comeback in game number one. A super cool comeback. But that game number two there was not the most inspiring as Madison opened up with just an array of non-synergistic one-power creatures and fairly easily won the game. <laughs> 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 this and more analysis coming to you from SUG Live. Right after this break, as we hear a word from our friends over at Ultimate Guard. The Katana Sleeves, a, a new dynasty and card protection will be available next Friday. Can you believe that? February 1st is next Friday. Is that the sleeves you gave me at the at the GP? You betcha. Those were nice. I enjoyed using those yeah, sleeves. There you go. There's the hard sell. <laughs> Comes in 10 colors. Made in Japan. Fully opaque. Pristine craftsmanship. What are the colors? Why did you do this? Why? I hope that your higher ups at Ultimate Guard are, are watching. White, black, blue, green, red, orange, turquoise, purple, translucent, and yellow. <laughs> you need to get out more, man. Good try. <laughs> Good try, <laughs> jerk. That's great. Good try. That is great. Do you want the skew numbers? Because I, I quit. I don't. Because I quit if I, I have to do I that. I don't. Okay. Good try. It's awesome, though. Committed to the work. It's all I do. Literally. I had to think about yellow for a minute there. Mm -hmm. That was the one I had to, I needed a minute. Yeah. I got, I got there. I got there. Available February 1st at retailers near you. Head over to ultimateguard.com. Use our store locator, their store locator, our store locator, where you can find where they'll be. Mm -hmm. There you go. Are they still looking at... Uh, you want to do another commercial? What are we supposed to do? Yeah, what, are, what do you want to talk about? Another Ultimate Guard one, I think. All right, hit we it. Get hey, these in. We got the hit, we got hit, the, hit the people with what they want. We got the backpack. Let's go and fire that bad boy up.
You want to ask me how many colors that comes in? One. It comes out in one color. Okay? Thanks for asking. Jonathan Hobbs, Max Magnuson, Bant Midrange, Azorius Agro. Getting ready for game number three. And then we'll be time shifting Anthony DeVardi and Nick Cowden, Saltai Midrange. A slog. Es Esper Control. Classic slog. We're never leaving the venue. Well, I guess this is the new world we live in with the time shifted <laughs> matches, huh? For right now. It's a it's a good new world. This actually no, this is great. I, I like all the new stuff. This is great. Doing. This is great. I'd rather I would rather be covering more magic and doing less advertising and commercial breaks. That's where we differ. Trivia questions. <laughs> just they're just in between breaks, staring at the you know the wheel of fortune, but for magic card names, screaming coal golem. At the monitor or whatever, and it's never Cole Gollum. I could do with I could do with less of that. <laughs> Maybe you should get better at the yeah. trivia. <laughs> it's her jackal. Her jackal. No, it's no, it's not. No, it's no, it's no, it's not. No, it's not. It's never been her jackal. It's never going to be her jackal. I'll make sure. <laughs> Evil of Eye of Orms by Gore. It is that a lot. Yeah, it's that one. That one's a good one. That is a good one. I played a lot of that at F and M back in the target days. Yeah, back in eighteen hundred. Nice. Uh, 2000 or so. Okay. That's a while ago. It was an anti-fires, an anti-fires blue-black deck mm. with Evil Eye of Orms by Gore and Glacial Wall in the sideboard, the 07 for three. I know Glacial Wall. It's got a and picture it, of a dog on it. Right. And the deck name was Seeing Eye Dog because you had <laughs> Evil Eye of Orms by Gore and Glacial Wall with the dog. Did you actually have a good fires matchup? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. They had Cavo Chameleons. That was their big tech against you. Okay. And you had Glacial Wall. <laughs> Even if they sacked their fires, Should they still can't, just not they, they still can't get through. It's still not enough. Sapperling Burst? You played Sapperling Burst against Glacial Wall? Pick a number. Any number. <laughs> None of the numbers work. <laughs> <laughs> I played a lot of Magic. <laughs> A lot of magic in 2000. I remember so, those times so fondly, even though those games are not good at all. <laughs> a deputy of detention is taking care of the time taker. As yes. Max, is, Max is left with a hunted witness, and now another one. Yeah, I think that uh, Madison here is moted by the <laughs> deputy of detention, and we will be moving on to the other semifinal just shortly. 2019's Glacial Wall. Oh, uh, nope, never mind. All right, we play on. We play on as Hobbs is missing a land drop. So we head back over to Max. This is a dauntless bodyguard. All the fun of watching people hit each other with foam bats. <laughs> Sock em boppers. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what they have. More fun than a pillow fight. Ooh, Conclave Tribunal will oh. resolve. That's a turn. All right, that's okay, I take it back. That's a turn. There we go. Let's use just let's use one of the some of the summoning sick baddies so that we can get in there with the hunted witness. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Bang. Does this resolve? Not quite. Syncopate for one. All right, still moted as you said by deputy of detention. Did Hobbs find a land? It doesn't look like he has. But it appears as though he has a play to make, given that he has not passed the turn back yet. Well, he can go ahead and uh, tap a creature to draw a card and try to find a land to play this turn. Mm -hmm. You can wait on that if you want to, but it's not like Madison is in a position to attack next turn, most likely. And you give you, you take off the table the ability to, to draw two lands in a row and play a five the next turn. So I think that's the decision that's being mulled over here. Yeah, it looks like he's digging for the land now, so he can try to play a land this turn, play a land next turn. And uh, looks like he got paid off. All right. Well, Breeding Pool's going to the battlefield tapped. We head back over 
to Magnuson, who actually also needs a land because he's got multiple copies of history. But Nalia in hand. There's a Glacial Fortress. There it is. That actually unlocks the entire hand. Two history of Nalia's and a deputy of detention. So there's the history in there. Here comes a 2-2 Vigilant Knights. We're going to head back over to Hobbs, most likely. I don't think there's a good attack to be made here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine permanents, so Snubhorn is not on just yet. So we head back over to Hobbs, who drew a history of his own. Now there's Knight of Autumn that's going to come down and take care of History Benalia. So now we'll head back over to Magnuson. Looks like he may have picked up a Tithe Taker. We might see him go back to History again, so another Knight on the way. History, of course, crazy good in multiples. City's blessing here. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Do we have an eligible attacker? Snubby. Time to go. Yep. Snubhorn Sentry. Ready to give them their beatdowns. Mm -hmm. yep. There you go. <laughs> I love myself a Snubhorn Sentry. That's land five. That's a Sun Petal Grove. Now Angel of Grace has been unlocked. The Snowporn Sentry is an 03 dinosaur, but it gets plus 3 plus 0 as long as you have the City's Blessing, which Max Magnuson does have. History of Benali will be read again. So another knight. So we work our way through Chapter 2. That is some hilarious art. <laughs> Snubhorn? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that card. There's Tithe Taker. Response. It'll be Frilled Mystic. I'll take care of that. The old Mystic Snake. A little bit bigger but still quite good. Frilled Mystic is going to end up trading with Dauntless Bodyguard, I believe. There's your block. There's your sack. Great. Snuffhorn's still alive. Hobbs is ready to untap and keep going. He'll draw. Picked up another land here in Sun Petal Grove. So starting to work himself through the mana issues that he had. Well, here we go. I mean, this is going to be, I think, the clutch turn of the game with History of Benalia about to enter Chapter 3. And uh, Magnuson with a pretty powerful incentive just to send them all Angel of Grace in hand, at least two here for Hobbs. Not a card that Max answers particularly well. Don't forget that Max does have a copy of Deputy of Detention in hand. Get a little work done there. Hops, a lot to think about on this turn. Don't think there's any attacks being made, but, you know, thinking about bluffing, because th this is what makes this deck kind of interesting, is he's got Angel of Grace and Settle the Wreckage in the same deck. And Cleansing Nova post board too. So how much do you sort of want to, you know, all those cards require a different sort of setup to play around here, so. Going to do a little bit of math here, perhaps, see what's going on with these knights. I mean, there's a big attack coming in, and it may not be lethal, but it also may not be enough for uh, Angel of Grace to make a really serious impact. Because you're going to go ahead and block one of the one of the Vigilance Knights, but that only trades. Mm -hmm. All right. History resolves. These knights are now 4-3 with Vigilance. Snubhorn a 3 3. Hunted Witnesses are 1 1s. And now we see where we go from here. I kind of just like sending any, everything in. I think all these half measure attacks don't do a whole lot to force Hobbs to play an Angel of Grace. And you're just giving him so much more time to get to things like March of the Multitudes or Settle the Wreckage, which blow you up if you take too long. 
And it's, the stump horn is like, whatever, that gets blocked by the angel, right? You don't really care. The knights can't be profitably blocked. And then the, the witnesses is sort of whatever, too. So you want to attack with everything. You just don't care if Hobbs has one of his two settles? No. Well, I, I don't know. If, you, if Hobbs has a full hand here, and every single time he has Angel of Grace, you, the combat's bad for you because you don't have lethal, and Hobbs gets a bunch of good blocks to whittle down your, your battlefield, I don't know how you're going to beat Settle the Wreckage. Okay. Anyway. Well, Max is attacking with everything. I, I, I know it's bad if he has Settle, but I just don't... He's just got too many cards to play around in his deck. And the more you direct this game out, the more opportunities you ha you give him to find Settle or find his Cleansing Nova post-board. Like, there's just a lot of cards you can't beat. This is a six-mana Angel of Grace because of the Tithe Taker that should be on the battlefield. And there that is. So Angel of Grace will beat the Snubhorn in battle. And yeah, Hobbs is at one. Exactly. Draw. Didn't get a great look at it. I know it's bad, but like Madison's deck just doesn't it doesn't have a whole lot of play to it. Like mm -hmm. you, you have what you have. And, and your position's not gonna get better. Hobbs has a bunch of draw steps that just are check marks on the game. It's over. So you got you just gotta take turns out. You know this. You play these decks against Cruel Ultimatum, right? All the time. Yeah, it's how much you try to like play around every last trick, right? You just do what you can yep. to present lethal in time. Here come the beatdowns. There's another Angel of Grace. It'll cost six because of the tie taker. Blockers. Going to take care of some of those knights. Hunted Witnesses will knock Hobbs down to one once again because of the Angel of Grace. And now we head back over to Jonathan. He'll draw Glacial Fortress, play that. Let's see what the follow-up is. Couple of cards here in hand. Again, his deck is so weirdly built with March of the, March of the Multitudes, Settle the Wreckage, Angel of Grace, Frilled Mystic, heck, even Blink of an Eye. And we're seeing, uh, you know, I think this is putting on display sort of just, you know, it, if by slow playing this, Matt Haas would have just gotten better blocks out of the Angels and may not even be at one at this point. Sure. And you'd still lose a set of the wreckage. Mm -hmm. Well, Magnuson's just drawing lands. He's got a spell pierce. It's not worth a whole lot here, but. It's not nothing. All right, there's a Warrant. Three mana style to put Tide Taker back on top. That looks like it's going to resolve. Yeah, Spell Pierce doesn't do anything here. You get the blocks of the Angels. All right, there's your blocks. And two turns from now, I guess Madison can maybe try to go for the same attack. Or next turn, he can just say, I can't beat anything at this point. I've got to risk the Deputy of Detention. And lose to anything. I think, uh, I think the last card, I, I think one of the cards in is March of Multitudes again. Well, that, uh, I mean, I think Hobbs is trying to play that one a little slow here because he's concerned about the Spell Pierce or something similar. Okay. So this is actually a really good setup here because you get to gum up the works a little bit, give yourself the cushion and some extra, uh, Creatures to work with for convo convoke purposes, such that you can march for a lot, not play into the spell pierce, and then actually close the game out pretty quickly because mm -hmm. there's Madison can't really address the angels attacking. Mm -hmm. So Hobbs might be able to play this patiently in such a way where uh, he doesn't even have to risk the spell pierce being good. Wow. Draw a card. There is Tithe Taker. Pass the turn back. Let's mm. go back over to Hobbs. And now Hobbs, you know. He's doing really well now. You don't have to worry about Spell Pierce here. We kind of forget sometimes how good March of the Multitudes is. So uh, the the other side of it, though, is, you know, Madison does have negates in the sideboard. So it's not like Hobbs' only calculus here is, can I do the March for enough to be to Spell Pierce? He also wants to make sure he doesn't attack in such a way uh, that negate just 
he randomly dies to a negate mm -hmm. because he's leaning on the march to be able to block. And you see right now very mindful of Spell Pierce in the way that he is uh, playing this March of the Multitudes, leaving up two and doing it just for the rest. I think also doing it on his own turn? No, I believe this is at the end. Okay. Because he wants to be able to, you know, he doesn't want to risk anything. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you do this on your own turn and he just is like, all right, negate. <laughs> not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, a, or, or deputy of detention. Right, it's not yeah. a good look. Okay. <laughs> well, that's going to resolve. Now you actually get to attack with, like, your March of the Multi tokens, maybe. Because like, you want to make sure you get some life, right? In case uh, your opponent were, were to peel. Deputy of Detentions, you probably want to attack? Well, you want to you want to attack for that reason. You also don't want to be sitting back on defense with nothing but the same creature, mm -hmm. such that Deputy of Detentions is problematic. So, you know, kind of the level one thing is you can attack with the Angels. No, Nothing to stop that. You kind of want to attack with the Knights. Uh, I like this. Yeah, I think this is probably the way to do it. The problem is if you just attack with the Knights and the Angels, he goes, all right, Tithe, uh, tithe Drinker in front of the Knight... Now I afterlife a token and you're dead. So you have to do something with the March of the Multitude tokens as well to protect against that. And once you're in the spot where you want to attack with some of the March tokens, you might as well attack with all. Yep. Because Magnuson is low enough that he probably has to block with some of his own tokens. You gain enough where there really isn't any draw on the way back that can get you killed. And you're not exposed to deputy detentions mucking up your blocks. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, That is my read of things. I think your read is pretty accurate. And I like just close this game out in two turns. There, there's really nothing to be done here if uh, Magnuson has to lose some of his creatures in combat and you pick up six life along the way uh, from your March tokens. I'm going to gain six life up to seven. Five, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Looks like five, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Is that eight? It looks like it's seventeen coming through. So it looks like Max might be falling down to one. Maybe. It's close. We'll get our life totals updated here. I don't think he's going to fall down to three. There's one spirit token. Hobbs, of course, will gain six life and go up to seven. And I'm not sure how Max, uh, how Max does this now. And not another land certainly doesn't help. And he drew quite a few over the course of this match. Hmm. Jonathan Hobbs is going to win this game of match here over Max Magnuson. Two games to one. Bat Midrange is going to take care of Azorius Aggro. And that